We are very excited about our next guest. Her name is Maggie Haverman of the New York Times. She is a badass. She's a Pulitzer Prize winner and the author of the best-selling book, yep, best-selling book, Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America. So Maggie, welcome. I'm really glad you're here. Thanks for having I've me. I've admired you for a very long time. Sure. So you literally wrote the book on Trump. And today we saw he almost got kicked out of the courts today for his very disruptive behavior. He gave a speech attacking the judge, and then he goes outside and, of course, talks to the press. So the way you look at it, do you think that the Trump trials are the new Trump rallies? We used to always cover the rallies. And now when he comes out of court, everybody covers what he has to... Well, not everybody, but he gets a lot of coverage when he comes out of the courtroom. Pretty much. I mean, he has melded his legal cases and his political campaign, so they are indistinguishable. He fundraises off the legal cases. And this was a civil case. He didn't have to be there today. Yes. He chose to be there. This is not a criminal trial where he would have to be in court. But most of his supporters don't know the difference. Uh, they don't hear the difference. They just hear noise that he's under fire. And they tune in that way. And they give him money that way. And so he is really leaning into this because he has learned the, the lesson that there is a benefit to him politically. Well, today in court, he seemed to want to get kicked out of mm -hmm. court. Can you talk about what happened in court today? Sure. So he went to court. He seems to deliberately taunt the judge. Uh, it, it seemed very much like that to me. This was, again, the civil trial involving E. Jean Carroll, this mm -hmm. New York writer who mm -hmm. accused him of uh, rape mm -hmm. decades ago. Mm -hmm. And he was already found liable for sexual abuse and defamation in a previous case mm -hmm. uh, related to her that she brought. In this case, he showed up for her testimony. And so instead of us talking about her testimony, her testimony yes. we are talking about the fact that he was making noises, he was overheard whispering to his lawyer, the judge, Lou Kaplan, who is a very serious judge. He's been on the bench a very long time, and it's a federal court. It's not the same as a state court where things tend to be a little looser. Mm -hmm. This judge gave him warnings and said at one point something to the effect of, I know you're, you want to get thrown out, and I'm not going to do that. And Trump responded, I would love that. And mm -hmm. I suspect, Gail, that that is true. He would mm -hmm. have liked to have gotten thrown out because he would then claim he was a victim. It's mm -hmm. heads, heads he wins, tails the other side loses. Mm -hmm. it, how long have you been color, covering politics? 20-some uh, odd years. Have you ever, uh, and I, I, I trust your expertise, seen candidates like him, you either love him or you hate him. Like, there's no middle ground. Like, his people love him, and everybody else hates him. Have you ever seen this type of firestorm? The only close to polarizing figure like Trump that I have seen ever at any level is Rudy Giuliani, okay. whose city hall I covered for the final three years of his administration. And then I covered his presidential campaign, which was very different because he was covered post 9 11 in a different way nationally. But at City Hall, he was incredibly polarizing, mm -hmm. and he made a number of racist statements, and he was uh, constantly at odds with black leaders, and he was constantly reflexively pro-cop, uh, no matter what the, the incident involving cops was. And that's the only thing that I can remember like this. But, but even still, it doesn't come close. But this is what I struggle with, Maggie, covering him, and I'm curious about how you handle this. You know, I always think that you're always entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own set of facts. How do you cover something where he's very fluid with the truth, as we know, and that it doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter that people will just believe anything that he says, even when it's been proven not to be true. How do you, how do you cover someone, or how do you present stories when the facts don't matter? So in the case of... Is it hard for you? It's, I think it's hard that there is no longer an objective fact set that is agreed upon in this country. And okay. that became clear in 2016, that things were heading that way. It has devolved much worse since then. I think one of the starkest examples is that since he left office and since he has been telling his election lies about 2020 relentlessly, and he won't stop doing it, and I don't think he's going to stop doing it in this campaign, um, the number of Republicans who believe his version of events, both about the election and about what happened on January 6th, yeah. has really changed. And so that's the starkest, starkest example. I mean, it's incumbent upon us to tell the cleanest, clearest version of the truth that we can. Mm -hmm. But is does it, that matter? Well, it matters in terms of how we do our jobs, because that is our job. Mm -hmm. And how many people understand that or hear that, we can't do anything about it. All we can try to do is make sure that our stories are checked out and clear. Have we ever had a candidate win a nomination and never <laughs> did a debate? 
Uh, I, I really can't think of anything like this from somebody who wasn't an incumbent, yeah. but he is running as if he's an incumbent, and that's what's and, so and weird. And that has not hurt him. And that has not, not doing any debates has not nope. hurt him. Not doing any debates, doing minimal events in Iowa. I mean, he did you know something close to thirty events, but that's nothing compared yeah. to what the other candidates did. This is unprecedented, and it is almost entirely. And not only because he does have a strong base of support, but these indictments have galvanized his supporters in ways that did not become clear yeah. until the summer. Yeah, now I've heard supporters say, listen, he may be, someone even said he may be morally bankrupt. I may not agree with how he conducts himself, mm -hmm. but I like his policies. And so those seem to, sometimes he behaves in ways that we would not want our children to behave. The thing, some of the, you know, telling the truth has always been very important to most parents I know or the way you treat people and the way you talk to people and about people seems to matter. So he behaves in ways that many people would not want their parents to behave, but people say, yeah, but I like his policies. I hear that is that where we are? Is that, that where we are in this country? That is very much where we are. We're mm -hmm. essentially, think, you know, everything is divided by not just how you view certain policies over behavior or, you know, uh, quote unquote right and wrong, it's uh, his supporters will say what he does is right because what he's doing impacts them in the way that they want and, and makes their lives better. You wrote a book about him. Do you have a rapport with him? Still, you seem to have had a rapport with him. Well, I covered him and, you know, I dealt with him a lot as a subject who I covered. Uh, he was very angry about the book. Uh, I had a lot of reporting in it that mm -hmm. made him very upset and he has continued to vent that upset. But the way he is, is he will always engage with a reporter eventually if he sees some reason to. And so he called me the other day. Uh, for he the called first you time the other day? Yeah, for the first time in a long time. And I, and I wrote say what? He wanted to talk about these cases and these trials that he was going to, because I was writing a story about how, you know, politics and the courts were going to converge again in January. This was a couple weeks ago. And he called to say that he wanted to attend all of these trials and to talk, you know, again about his attacks on the judge and the civil case and to talk about Eugene Carroll, much of which I didn't report mm -hmm. on. But, uh, but he, when he, he thinks he's his own best comms director mm -hmm. and his own best defender. But and you'll see more of that, I suspect. One, one final question. As a mom, are you... So your son Dash is here yes. tonight. Yeah, As like a that. mom, and your kid's going to be grow up yeah. in the next few years, are you hopeful about the next year? I think this is going to be a pretty bleak uh, mm -hmm. campaign uh, on, a, on, on many levels. Mm -hmm. But I just think that the way that our campaigns are fought now are all about who you hate and who hates you back. And I think you are going to see that to the nth degree in 2024. Right to be continued. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. For taking the time.